Welcome to Tech Notice. It's time to talk about another ASUS motherboard. In fact, the ProArt motherboard over here. Now, this is the only ProArt motherboard for the Intel's 12th gen that has DDR4 memory support over here. So this is the brand new B660 Creator board with DDR4 memory, and it's the smaller brother of this Z690. So let's have a look at this B660 motherboard and let's have a look if it's worth it over the Z690. Motion Array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster. Motion Array has over 80,000 premium quality templates, presets, plugins, music and sound effects, stock video and photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs. Pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want. And enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. So I'm gonna give you some good news first. The best news about this motherboard, in fact, all of the ProArt motherboards with ASUS is that you're gonna get three months for free with Adobe Creative Cloud membership, which can cost you a lot of money, up to like $250 or something like that. So if you count that into the membership, even though if you already have your membership, you can like extend the months or get extra three months. or even if you're already paying with it, you can still redeem this. So if you're a creator, this motherboard might look like it's not going to cost you a lot of money if you put that benefit inside the cost of this motherboard. I don't exactly know the retail cost of this, so forgive me of this. Maybe I will add this on the screen here, but because these were released yesterday. So let's open the motherboard. Usually there is a Wi-Fi board over here or Wi-Fi antenna, but this is empty, so there is obviously no Wi-Fi. We have some literature and things. We have like a quick start guide we have a user guide over here we have asus control center express safety information cd dvd this should already be a usb stick come on we have two sata drives over here one of them is angled one of them is straight then we have one display port cable over here which is really confusing for me and i have no idea why this is in the box then there's this tiny little screw which is for the wi-fi and bluetooth card and then we have these standoff stickers or little rubber pads uh, that are for the M.2 slots. So let's have a look at the motherboard layout and connectors over here. Starting from the top, we have the CPU power, which is 4 plus 8 pin. Then we have some PWM connectors, and these are all exactly the same 12 watt connectors. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 connectors over here. Moving on to the corner over here, we have some RGB connectors. There's one 12 volt connector, and then there is three five volt connectors one here and then two on the bottom over here 24 pin atx power and then next to it we have another six pin pcie power and this power over here is for this usb-c front panel connector basically by adding the six pin pcie power over here this front USB-C panel actually has a 60 watt power delivery as well as 20 gigabits in speed bandwidth transfer. So this is quite an awesome part over here. You have a front panel type A USB port over here. This is five gigabits in speed. You have four SATA ports over here. Then some front panel connectors, USB 2.0 ports over here. You have one sensor header over here and then some other connectors that pretty much nobody uses apart from the front panel audio on here. When talking about the socket, obviously this is the new LGA 1700 new socket for the 12th gen of Intel chips. It's interesting the actual manual over there that it says that it supports Intel 10 nanometer CPUs, which is a funny thing to say in a manual like that because that doesn't necessarily restrict it to generations. What if the next generations will be 10 nanometers as well or the ones after? It's just a funny thing to say. Usually the Z690 ASUS boards have two mounting holes, like for the LGA 1200 and 1700. So you could use like your old cooler bracket basically to cool this down. This B660, only one LGA 1700 mounting holes over here. Four RAM slots, but dual channel. So you have two slots per channel. And this can support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. It is DDR4 
which is the best thing about this motherboard. Moving on to the chipset over here. This chipset is the new B660 chipset and this is supposed to be like more affordable motherboards for the 12th gen Intel because you probably already know that the 12th gen like Z690 motherboards are super super expensive. So this is like to counteract that and be more affordable. So this B660 doesn't support any CPU overclocking if you're into that type of thing but if you're a creator I don't think you should be doing that but it does support memory overclocking which basically means XMP profiles as well because there are some of the lower end motherboards like the H610 motherboards or B610 motherboards which don't support even like overclocking on the memory but this B60 does. This B660 chipset also has only six PCIe 4.0 lanes for the chipset and that's why we have limited number of PCIe 4.0 NVMe storage. So let's pull these heat sinks off and then let's have a look at those M.2 slots then. As you can see, the heat sinks are on the first and the third slot of the M.2 slot. And they are marked with PCIe 4.0 like markings, so you know that these are PCIe 4.0 speeds. The single layer of thermal pads on the heat sinks. And let's have a look over here then. So this top PCIe slot over here gets its lanes from the CPU. So it's PCIe Gen 4 X4 slot, and it also supports 110 millimeter NVMe's, as you can see. You can put it over there if you wanted to. This second M.2 slot over here, which doesn't have the heatsink, is PCIe 3.0 slot. And this is X4 slot, and you also get 110 millimeters over here. And this supports Intel opt-in as well if needed. Then on the bottom here, the third slot is PCIe 4.0, and that goes to the chipset. The second slot over here is chipset as well. But this one over here also supports the 110 millimeters long opt-in memory if you needed to but also short ones if you ever needed to use short ones so we have three m.2 slots but also there is another little m.2 slot and this is for the wi-fi so you can add a wi-fi or bluetooth card over here as you can see this motherboard doesn't have wi-fi or bluetooth built in but the cool thing is you can add it as an extra card which is a cool thing because you know these wi-fi cards aren't very expensive and if you don't need it you know, you don't have to buy it, but there is actual slot where you can just literally plug it in and then get the antennas on the back on one of the, you know, PCA slot covers that are on the back of the case, then have your antennas run over there and you can add just like Wi-Fi, you know, 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 if you wanted to, which is really, really cool. Then let's have a look at the PCA slots over here. So then this top slot over here is like X16 slot. It's connected to the CPU and it's PCA 5.0 support. So 16 lanes of PCA 5.0, you know, full fact as good as it can get. Then this uh, second one over here is PCIe 3.0 and it's actually uh, even though being full size it's only X4 slot because the pins end over there. It is PCIe 3.0 slot and these lanes come from the chipset. There is also an X1 slot on the bottom over here but this shares bandwidth with the M second M.2 over here which is PCIe 3.0 as well. So if you've got an M.2 installed on the second slot over here then this X1 slot just is disabled. Okay that out of the way let's have a look at the I.O. of the motherboard. So we have an HDMI out port over here and we have a display port in over here and this is the most confusing thing ever like I have no idea why this exists over here because you have display port in but there's no other video outputs on this motherboard you're not gonna get output from this type C you're not gonna get output from like any of the other internal connectors but you have this HDMI port so basically this display in is only to get HDMI out from here which is very very confusing so basically if your CPU in there doesn't have the I GPU so if it's a KF or an F variant of the CPU and you can't use the HDMI port on the motherboard you can put a DP port cable that we had on the box over here display port cable from the graphics card to here then you can use the HDMI port which for me is just like a waste of parts. I don't think anyone's going to use this. Like, why would you lose one part on the graphics card to put it in here to get it out from there? I don't know. Like, let me know if you're one of those people who need it for some reason. To me, it makes zero sense to me. I don't understand why this is here. Because it's display port in, it's not output. I, I'd get it if it was output and maybe you can get two monitors for the iGPU, but because it's one, it, it doesn't make any sense for me. Then there's four USB 2.0 ports over here. And then these blue ports underneath these are 
are four USB ports and these are five gigabits in speed. So USB 2.0 speeds and then five gigabits ports, the blue ones. And then we have one USB-C port, which is 10 gigabits in speed in the back. No video output, no nothing, just a you know normal USB. 3.2 Gen 1 or Gen 2 port. Gen 2. Oh, never mind these USB ports, they're so confusing. Then we have two LAN or RJ45 connectors. This is 1 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit in speed ports, which is pretty cool. So if you're a creator who runs maybe, you know, you put your internet on the 1 gigabit port, and then maybe you have a NAS that runs a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, then you put it in here and then, you know, you can use it, which is fantastic. You have an optical out port and then some audio ports over here. So then, my two cents about this motherboard. Now, I love that, first of all, ProArt has done the D4 version of ProArt motherboards for the 12th gen, which means that you can use DDR4 for the 12th gen. The big question for me is, this is supposed to be a creative motherboard, but I don't see a lot of creative features in here. Usually they have at least something, like two of the Ethernet ports are 2.5 gigs, or we have a Thunderbolt port, or we have something that creators want, but this is, to me, just a normal, you know, could be a gaming motherboard. I get it that this is a budget and they have to, you know, cut all the fancy parts over here, but I'd like to see at least something that is slightly, you know, towards the greater things, because otherwise I don't see why you should get this board instead of some kind of gaming board, because you might get the gaming board a little bit cheaper than this ProArt board. Although if you are on like Adobe Creative Cloud, then this motherboard could make a lot of sense because you might only pay like 20, 30 something dollars, you know, if, if you add up the cost of Adobe Creative Cloud three months membership and then this this costs like very little for you which which is good but neither of the USB ports are like 10 gigabit ports like on the USB type A ports but the front panel connector USB-C is quite fast so you could put like some kind of hope through the USB front panel header but it's it's just like interesting, okay? I do like that this is DDR4, like I mentioned before, because the DDR5 at the moment is very, very expensive and it's not so different than the DDR4, so it's kind of makes, makes sense. Also, you can't run two GPUs in here because if you have another GPU, you need like an X8 slot over here, but this is X4 slot, so it's not gonna go for that. You can run only one GPU over here, so this is quite like quite basic but I don't know if this is worth the ProArt kind of badge, because if you look at the like B550, that was, you know, for the AMD system equivalent kind of for this, this is, you know, B660 and B550. It's getting a bit confusing now with all the, you know, chipset names. This B550, for the AMD, it's a little bit of a cheaper version of the X570 Pro Art. It's still quite expensive, about 250 quid or something like that. But we have some killer features over here. We have like two Thunderbolt 4 ports on AMD board, and that's why this is like unbelievable like deal for a motherboard. Now for this one over here, I don't know this if this is this is, like seems too big of a step down from this Z690 board that's in there. Have you seen that build yet, by the way? Go check this out, you know, if you want to see the Z690 Pro out over there, because that has all the bells and whistles, but I think they kind of brought, like, wrong things over. For example, I don't think this board should have this, like, super fast front panel connector, the 20 gigabits one, because that doesn't make a difference. We could easily have the uh, 10 gigabit, you know, front panel connector without the quick, ch quick charge, we don't need that really, but what I'd like to see is maybe a Thunderbolt port in the back over there. But I do like that there is a Wi-Fi card slot just empty over here, which I haven't seen in any of the AMD motherboards. This is a very nice feature. So basically, if you do need Wi-Fi things, you can easily add that. And that's awesome because that does cut the cost down of adding the Wi-Fi and everything, you know, built in. It's nicer to have that. I know a lot of creators say that, oh, I don't need Wi-Fi. You know, you should be using wired internet, but it's not about the Wi-Fi. It's more about the Bluetooth because like a keyboard and mouse and things like that are Bluetooth and some of the other things are. And Wi-Fi thing is sometimes awesome to have a backup if you need to use maybe a hotspot or something like that. Obviously, as always, the design is very, very cool. You know, pro art design. I think it's like just the nicest motherboards that are out there. I I'm not a big fan of all this big gaming flashy flashy, you know, no RGB, just looks beautiful. If you're editing in Premiere Pro maybe and upgrading and you consider the cost of the Adobe Premiere Pro Cloud, Adobe Creative Cloud membership in this, this motherboard costs you next to nothing, which is absolutely amazing. So if you're thinking about the upgrade path, 
and maybe just something to get going for now this could be one of the only motherboards that you should really be looking at because ddr5 like the z690 ddr5 is so expensive at the moment and so rare it's kind of not worth it for the price but i think it kind of ticks a lot of the boxes to make this a good choice but at the same time it's kind of missing there so i've got mixed feelings but i'd love to know what you're thinking pro art over here do you love this do you love the design uh, the features everything or is it kind of a miss let me know what you think in the comments below i'll meet you down there as always guys thanks for watching if you're interested in the z690 motherboard overview go check that out on the channel that's inside there or if you want to check out this build over here also go check that out on the channel thanks guys for watching i'll see you soon Bye-bye.